Hey everybody, this is Eric Enga, CEO, founder of Stone Temple Consulting, uh, coming at you from the Search Engine Journal Facebook page with a live broadcast. So bear with me, I am, uh, well, uh, doing this for the first time, so hopefully we'll do it smoothly as possible. Uh, and this is in support of the new uh, SEO guide that uh, Search Engine Journal just published. Um, one of the contributors to that guide with a lot, a lot of other really great people that are part of it. So hopefully you'll check that out and find that uh, uh, really interesting along the way. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through 12 different questions that I've been given and, and told to uh, actually uh, uh, share my thoughts with uh, all of you on this. And the first one of those is how will you know if your SEO strategy is wrong? Uh, well, okay, I could have a little fun with the answer to this question. Uh, duh, uh, my traffic is crashing or my traffic's not going up. Um, well, okay, that's not an incorrect answer, uh, but there are more nuanced and interesting answers than that as well. So, for example, um, you might want to try having competitive ser uh, services that you look at and see how your traffic growth is comparing to your competitors. So, even if your traffic is going up, it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing all the right things, right? So that's kind of one way to think about this uh, as a way of measuring whether or not your uh, SEO strategy is doing the right things. But I also think there's other kinds of things you can do too. You can try to do different kinds of health checks uh, to see if you're making obvious mistakes. Because once again, even if your traffic is going up, you could be doing some things that are incorrect. Very common mistake I see on a lot of sites uh, is not doing a proper job of dealing with thin content and poor quality content. So that's something that I see uh, happen all the time. Uh, another thing that people do is they get too excited about uh, uh, links as being a part of SEO and they do some bad link building things, or they try to get into uh, having too many versions of pages to, for different search terms. So those are things where you pretty much just have to do some sort of uh, uh, health checks uh, uh, to try to, to sort that out. And there are tools that try to do that for you, which can find some problems. In some cases, you just need to get somebody who really knows their SEO to help you out. So that's one. So my second question that I'm supposed to answer is, how should you handle penalties from Search Console or Google Search Console? Oh boy, that's a, that's a tougher question. Uh, actually, it's an easier question. And that is, um, it's just tough if you actually have one of these things. That's the problem. By the way, you'll forgive me if I move around. I kind of like to do that when I'm talking uh, uh, in live presentations. There, you can see my kids up on the, on the wall behind me and my wife, actually and a Tesla. Oh, sorry. Um, so that's a little extra color for you. Um, anyway, in terms of penalties, uh, you know, the most common ones are link penalties or thin content penalties. And if you have one of those, then um, you, know, you kind of have to dig in and figure out what to do. Uh, but a lot of times, uh, um, it's not so easy for people. Uh, if you have a, a link penalty, you may have been acquiring links that you thought were perfectly okay, but the reality is that uh, uh, you know Google disagrees, um, and um, and and then thin content penalties. I alluded to this before. You know, in the SEO strategy, this is a situation where you're publishing too many pages and exposing them to Google, and Google thinks they're crappy. Um, the biggest thing you have to do in these situations is you have to internalize what's going on, and it probably means you have to change your strategy at a more basic level. It means that you're getting too absorbed in the chase for Google traffic, is often the case, and you have to back up and really uh, be more thoughtful and focus more on deeper levels of uh, adding value to um, uh, you know, to, to users visiting your site. So, um, so you know, that's the deeper strategic part of this. The good news is if you can come out from underneath one of these penalties and you do it by truly in, uh, improving the underlying quality of your overall strategy, 
you actually can get some really, really cool upside uh, and actually set your business up for a really good, stable growth from there because you'll have fixed kind of a strategic flaw in your business. So um, the next question, is it advisable to change your SEO strategy midway through its execution if you see sudden drops in, in traffic? Um, well, actually, when I see a drop in traffic, the first thing I want to do is diagnose it. Uh, and I wouldn't change anything until you've diagnosed the problem. So we talked just a moment ago about, you know, if you had penalties in Google Search Console and, uh, you know, that's one way you can be told at least something about what the problem is, uh, is if Search Console, you know, they literally just tell you. Uh, of course, those messages don't always tell you every aspect of um, of what you need to know and you have a lot of work to do. But a lot of times, you know, we have uh, sites that get hit by Panda or Penguin. And if you get hit by one of those, you know, you don't know what the cause is. All you do is you see the traffic drop, you know, boom, down. Um, and uh, so that's pretty evident. But at the moment you see the traffic drop, you don't know why. So when I see that traffic drop, the first thing you want to do is you want to go through the diagnosis stage. That's, that's the, the thing I would urge. I wouldn't change anything until you've done that because there may be a lot of things you're doing right. So, for example, you might have a... Th oh, my, everybody. I'm so sorry, but I apparently have had some sort of connection problem here. So... Uh, yes, that's uh, Brent Satoris here. Ah, uh, Facebook, why you hate me is his comment in the stream here. <laughs> it's apparently hating me at the moment. I'm so sorry, everybody, for the interruption. Um, so, uh, like I, I was saying, uh, you, you got to diagnose before you change your strategy, and you may have a, a fabulous uh, link building or content marketing strategy working for your business, uh, and you wouldn't want to quit it uh, in, in a knee-jerk reaction uh, to seeing some sort of traffic drop when the, the real problem might be that you just, you know, are having some site architecture or content uh, problems on your site. So diagnose first, but then once you diagnose, you want to act very, very promptly. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So one of those uh, kinds of problems um, is, you know, basically the link-related problems. And if you may be having problems with uh, uh, bad links. You may have gotten a message. You may have figured out that you, you uh, had a, a penguin problem. And if you have one of those, you're going to have to take a really good, harsh look at the links uh, for your site. Um, and the way I like to do that is I like to pull data from Webmaster Tools, from Open Site Explorer, from Majestic SEO and Ahrefs. I like to use all four sources. And then I will put those through a process where I dedupe the list. We actually have a tool here at uh, Stone Temple that does that and a few more th things, uh, really most of what I'm about to describe uh, in our own tool. But even without the tool, you can do this. So build the list, dedupe all these links, and then really focus on taking a look at each and every single linking domain. Um, you don't necessarily have to look at each every single link, but you pretty much need to look at every linking domain, in my opinion. Um, and with that, um, uh, you know, you uh, have to evaluate whether or not that link was really editorially given. Um, you know, was it a paid link? Was it swapped for something? Um, you have to use a very harsh lens. Don't, don't skimp on this. The last thing you want to do is, you know, remove, you know, half your bad links. Uh, and then when you're done with that, say, oh, okay, it's much better now. Maybe Google will let me get away with that. And then wait for many months uh, only to find it wasn't enough and have to go through the whole process again. When you've been hit by a penalty, getting out from under it fast is my biggest uh, advice, and that means take a meat cleaver, if it in the case, this case, to the links, uh, and really prune it away to the ones that you know are rock solid. So that's how I approach the links part. Um, so next question, 
how do you know if your content strategy is aligned with Google's content policies? Ah, well, um, this is the first easy answer that everybody always goes to, but it's not sufficient to be honest. Uh, but the first answer is, you know, think about user value and does the page, each page have enough distinct user value uh, to exist? And, and there's certainly merit to that. So I always like to use a resume example. Uh, you shouldn't have one page for resume writing service and another page for writing resume services. There's no reason for your website to have both those pages. It just makes no sense at all. They, they, there's no, the content on the pages should basically be identical. Uh, and, and, you know, just simply writing a different article doesn't solve that problem, to be honest. So, uh, um, you know, that, that's uh, one kind of thing where it's kind of obvious that, that the page shouldn't exist. But let me give you a more subtle scenario. You have an e-commerce site. Uh, and one of the things that's popular in e-commerce sites um, is uh, faceted navigation. Uh, and what that refers to is if you have uh, uh, a, a clothing site and the clothing site, um, uh, you know, has uh, um, different colors, different sizes, different styles, uh, maybe for shirts, you know, something like that. Um, from Google's perspective, Google doesn't necessarily want all those different versions of pages in their index. So for them, that would be a case where the content quality is actually an issue from their perspective. Uh, but uh, your users would actually want those different versions of the pages. So it's not actually bad to have those in there. So you have to use the first filter, which is, does Google want the page? And that's a valid filter. But then the second filter is, does it make sense for uh, um, uh, Google to have that in their index? So, uh, so the user filter first, and then does really Google want that many different versions of pages? So that'll be the next question for you. All right, next question for me is, how do you file reconsideration requests? Well, the big thing there is you just have to be aware that reconsideration requests are going to humans. Uh, and, um, you know, the humans that are looking at this spend all day long dealing with people who willfully violate their webmaster guidelines. And, you know, um, uh, it, it, they may be in a bad mood when they get your reconsideration request. They don't want to hear you complaining. It's just got to be straight and to the point. It's like, Okay, I want to create uh, uh, a very straightforward message. Uh, I'm sorry, here's the mistake we made. Here, here's how we diagnosed it. Here are the things we found. Here's how we've corrected it. And, you know, we, we've seen the light, and now I'm making a little fun of the way of putting it. Please pick better wording. But we understand that we violated the guidelines and we're committed to, to following them going forward. But make it a really genuine effort before you uh, actually, um, uh, you know, um, send in a reconsideration request. Okay, what other types of Google penalties should we be aware of? Well, there's some that I hope you never have to be aware of, like there's a kind of penalty called pure spam. Um, and that's the, uh, you know, uh, uh, means that you're way over the line and you don't want to ever be in, in, in that boat. Um, uh, for sure. Um, uh, let's see. I mean, I, I alluded ten, gentle, tangentially to Panda and Penguin, which technically I don't think Google considers penalties. I just think them, they think of them as ranking algorithms. But um, so that's where uh, those are at. But you can also run into things. Uh, there's an algorithm for, you know, uh, People used to call it the top heavy algorithm where there was just too many ads uh, above the fold uh, uh, on, uh, on your site. So you can do things uh, uh, like that. So that's another one that I would be uh, concerned about. Um, okay. Well, the next question actually I think I've uh, addressed at least somewhat is how should you recover from a major Google penalty? Um, 
And you know, you know, again, what I was really getting at is, uh, um, you know, just bring a meat cleaver to the problem once you figure out what's going on and be very, very harsh. But what I do want to assure you, which is kind of an add-on to this question, by the way, now I'm going to show you the art of SEO in the background. There we go. See, that's the third edition. Uh, so you're getting a little extras because of the live uh, event. Um, we've, we've been able to help people recover from all manner of different penalties. Uh, and there's li literally, uh, 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 I don't know, over 100 sites at this point that we've helped recover. Link penalties, thin content penalties, Panda, Penguin, uh, um, and, you know, uh, recovery is possible. And when, when you look beyond the basics of, uh, of how you approach recovering from a penalty and you look to what the penalty should tell you about how you modify your strategy uh, overall and how you embrace a better way of approaching SEO, um, you actually end up in a much stronger spot. Uh, if you do that well, you can be in a better place than, um, than you were before the penalty. Oh, I like this question. Um, is there such a thing as Murphy's Law in SEO? Okay, I don't know, it's kind of too light up there. Can you actually see the outside train tracks down there in case you're interested? Uh, is that the Tesla, is that the, no, I don't have the Tesla in the picture. Sorry, I can't show you that. Um, sorry, throwing in some extras here. Um, Murphy's Law in SEO, um, absolutely, uh, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a certain amount of Murphy's Law in SEO, but, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, do you, you, you really should just try to approach things in a holistic way. For me, in fact, just foreshadowing for you, my next column on Search Engine Land, which we publish sometime soon, is about sustainable competitive advantage in content marketing. I actually like to invest in things that are hard. I'm not the guy who wants to spend a dollar today and make three dollars tomorrow. Actually, that's a lie. I would love to do that. But the reality is those opportunities are being chased by everybody in your space. So they become almost impossible to succeed. So if instead I focus my energy be on really good, on things that um, uh, are hard to do, and I learn to execute them really, really efficiently, then I put my business in such a good spot where I have a sustainable competitive advantage. And all those other people out there spending a dollar trying to make three are kind of just falling further and further behind. So um, I'm going to actually take a quick question here from uh, Brent Satoris. Hey, Brent, how are you? Glad to have you here. Um, his question was, at what point do you give up trying to get out of a penalty and start over? So great question. I mean, one, and I'll just go back to the link example. You know, if you look at your link portfolio and you do the kind of auditing I was talking about and your judgment, you realize, oh, my gosh, uh, you know, by the time I remove all the good links, I have hardly uh, bad links. I mean, I have hardly any good links left. Well, then maybe it's easier to start over. Um, or uh, if you've had a history of penalties, like it's not your first rodeo, so to speak, in terms of dealing with penalties, I do think it's possible for domains to get into a state where you'd need to trash them. There's just too much history there. Uh, and you might be better moving that content uh, somewhere else and getting a fresh start. Um, so I think those are a couple of scenarios where, where that comes up. Okay, just three questions left. How do you enforce your su suggested strategies at Stone Temple Consulting? Ah, so we, we mount video cameras in all of our clients' offices, and if we see them doing something wrong, we give them an electric shock. Uh, it works really well, uh, and it helps them retrain their, oh, sorry, that's the wrong answer. Um, yeah, enforcement is hard. Um, you know, w one example of this, is we run into this uh, at clients where, uh, especially larger companies, where they have um, a, a, a number of people touching the site. And so uh, they may at some level have people who completely understand what the right things are to do for SEO and they're doing all the right things. Uh, and, and that's great. But then somewhere else in the organization, someone is reverting it. So for me, uh, I think, um, 
the thing you want to do is you have to set up really good monitoring. Uh, so uh, there's a good tool out there from a friend of mine, Mark Monroe, called SEO Radar, which will monitor pages and tell you if things change in a way that you didn't expect. Uh, uh, we have our own way of doing something like that's a little different than, than Mark's kind of complementary to what he does. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, if you have developers touching the site, make them get certified before they're allowed to, to uh, make a change. And by certified, I mean put them through your own testing where you make them you know, sign up that they understand that this is the kind of tagging that goes on this page and uh, these get no index and those get canonicals and, and we don't create pages with uh, uh, tracking parameters and uh, put them through a process before you let them touch the site. So, um, okay, back to another question from Brent. Is it easier to get a second penalty after you've gotten out of the first? So, uh, yeah, uh, to paraphrase his last part, how forgiven is forgiven? Um, I think, in my experience, if you've had one penalty, um, I, I think there isn't really that much um, lingering damage to your reputation, uh, um, you know, uh, but by the time you get the second one, uh, I think it starts to, uh, that you get looked at more often. I do think that's something you need to be concerned about. Um, all right, two questions to go. Um, what practices have you discovered to avoid Google penalties? Well, I think I've, I've been touched base on that in a number of different ways, and it really, again, comes back down to uh, focusing on the basics. In fact, I'll answer this one and uh, the, the, the twelfth question, which is, is it correct to say that long-term SEO strategies do not change? We must instead learn the basics and execute consistently. Um, so I, I do agree that uh, executing consistently uh, is a good thing. Uh, to do, and this no article I wrote recently on the Moz blog that uh, I'm going to uh, um, mention to all of you, and that article in the Moz blog was my my theory that there's a two-factor ranking model, and that here's my last freebie, by the way. That's a picture of my father, uh, actually his obituary from a few years ago, taught physics at MIT for 30 years. There we go, we'll let you get close. There we go, Harold Inga. Um, so, uh, but in any case, um, the two-factor ranking model, if you are constantly working on improving the quality of your content uh, and, and you have a passion about it and you're constantly testing the new ideas and finding ways uh, to, to make it better, constantly making it easier for your users to parse it, uh, understanding how they're using site search to ask queries because they're not finding information they're looking for, monitoring where their eyes go on the page, trying to figure out all these different things, then you're doing some fantastic stuff to, um, to, to really bring your content to a very high level. And that makes it so much more linkable, by the way, if you do all those things. Um, and then if you're really doing effective marketing, from the dawn of time, a, a, you know, for when people have been selling things, it's always made sense to do two things produce a great product or service, and then number two, market it really well. Uh, and that marketing it really well, th those two long-term SEO strategies, they never change. And if you really have a passion for both of those, then I think you will do uh, a, a really good job of avoiding penalties and, uh, and be in a much better spot. That said, uh, you know, SEO does have, have some elements which are highly technical in nature. Uh, and there are some things that are important to, to, to learn. Uh, so um, that's, you know, that's past the, the, the two factors that I mentioned. You know, it does still matter that you use coding techniques that Google can follow relatively easily. Um, you know, so that does matter. Uh, you, it does matter whether or not your code is like, uh, really obtuse and, and large on your page. Uh, for one thing, it makes a slow loading, loading page, which is crappy user experience. And Google doesn't like it either. Um, it does matter that you understand how to use things like no index and rel canonical. Those things matter. But get the first two parts right, 
and you'll get a lot of forgiveness for errors in the rest of it. So with that, I think I'm almost at the end of my uh, uh, half hour here. Um, so um, if I don't get a last question in a second or so, uh, then I might uh, ring off. But I'm going to scroll back through just to see if I um, uh, see anything here. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, Brent, uh, I want to comment on one more thing he said earlier. Link building always seems to come with the word penalty. Uh, you know, uh, that's a great comment, uh, Brent, because I think that's that's true. But it's it became true because link building, the genesis of it was that people learned that links were good for SEO. And the way people started these things was um, a very mechanical process of acquiring links no matter what. There's still ways that link building can be done right. Uh, if you have an apartment site, uh, it's not a bad idea to go to a local college uh, and on the page they have for their students suggesting apartment sites to ask that they link to your site. If you have a local barber shop, it's not a bad idea to ask for a link on the local chamber of commerce. Uh, so those are link building activities that are very pertinent to your business and still okay. Uh, from my perspective. So there are still some things you can do. Um, a lot of other things, not so much, right? So with that, I think I'm at the end of my half hour. Um, you know, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Uh, I hope you've had fun. I did, and I'm sorry again for the interruption. Oh, wait, we're going to do one last thing. We're going to give you a quick walk around the office here, uh, except I won't be able to get all uh, around all of it. We're actually 70 people here at Stone Temple Consulting. You might hear a little background noise. There are our company values going by right there. Uh, here, out here is the, the pit where all our uh, senior marketing consultants uh, reside. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, right there, there they are. Okay. Uh, and there's the hallway outside of my office. That's actually only about a quarter of the office, but I thought I'd give you guys a quick look. Say hi, Matt. Hi. Say hi, hi Michelle. Hi. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye.